Hello friends, welcome to BioNews. Today I have three papers to discuss with you guys. Most, all three of them are about biomarkers. We'll begin with one about biomarkers and cardiovascular disease. The paper is by Maynarik et al. In this paper, they considered the relevance and the predictive value of the biomarker ratio called the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio in the prediction of cardiovascular risk across genders. Before we discuss this ratio specifically, let me tell you guys what I learned from this awesome review paper about how the immune system functions dramatically different between men and women. I've come across this before in my own studies of autoimmune disease, but it's awesome to have such a clear outline in this paper. So let me give you guys an overview. Basically men, w let's begin with women. Women have an immune system that is predisposed toward T helper type 1 cells predominance, that's Th1. Men have an immune system that, is, that has a Th2 cell predominant. In women's system, the, the T cell regulatory, T reg, is also predominant. In men, it isn't. Women's immune systems are focused on humoral antibody-mediated processes. Men's aren't. This leads men to having immune systems that are, have more potential to produce atherosclerosis, whereas women have immune systems that have more potential to produce metabolic uh, syndrome, type 2 diabetes, as well as autoimmune uh, conditions. And in women's immune system specifically, the regulatory T cells, they are called T reg cells, they actively suppress effector T cells, protecting against prolonged immune reactions to self antigens, like in cardiovascular disease. They also produce more antibodies to B lymphocytes because of the estrogens in the woman. Now the woman's bias shifts from Th2 slash Treg towards Th1 slash T, uh, Th17 after menopause. And this is where the complicating factor comes in in using these biomarkers to predict cardiovascular events among women. So let's talk about the biomarkers briefly. So the total white blood cell count which is a count of which is a, a proxy of immune system function is actually used to predict cardiovascular events and it is successful however it's not so specific because it's very influenced by gender age metabolic function and so on within the white blood cell count there are neutrophils there are a kind of white blood cell that are pro-inflammatory and that produce that enhance inflammation via something called the neutrophil extracellular traps nets neutrophils re represent a non-specific immune response while lymphocytes represent specific immune response. So the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio is more predictive than the white blood cell count ratio because it's more specific. It's reflecting the amount of non-specific immune function divided by specific immune function. Whereas lymphocytes are not predictive of cardiovascular disease events on their own always, neutrophils are. This division enhances the specificity of the biomarker. So that's a summary of that paper. A second paper by Lu et al. considered the value of the biomarker called C-reactive protein as a predictor of inflammatory bowel disease activity. And what does that mean? This means that most people get, by the way, inflammatory bowel diseases contain two diseases, ulcerative colitis called UC and Crohn's disease called CD. In ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, both of those diseases have usually a, a time course events where people get what are called attacks of the disease and then uh, uh, a remission of the disease. So in this study, they were trying to find biomarkers that are good predictors or proxy variables to show activity of the disease. And first we cover um, what's going on right now. So the standard practice, the best uh, method to find out if uh, inflammatory bowel diseases like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease are active is via an endoscopy. But endoscopies are invasive, uh, patients don't want to go through them, they cost a lot of money, various other issues. So we try to find biomarkers from easier uh, sources like blood ideally. But by the way guys, endoscopies aren't the be all end all either. I found that some people can have inflammatory bowel diseases and in endoscopies or colonoscopies can't find the actual sites of inflammation. I mean, the doctors don't see the inflammation in the intestinal system. So it's not a be all end all. But the second most accurate method is by a measurement of uh, stool samples. Specifically, they check out fecal uh, calprotectin, which is a common measure. Again, that's a little bit difficult because patients have to give uh, stool samples. So the two main blood biomarkers that are used are C-reactive protein as well as erythrocyte sedimentation rate. This paper showed that uh, C-reactive protein was an excellent predictor of disease activity. In this retrospective Chinese study by Lu et al., they found that the C-reactive protein measure, when divided by albumin, was a particularly predictive biomarker of disease activity, as opposed to C-reactive protein on its own.
So C-reactive protein is produced by hepatocytes in the liver in response to inflammatory cytokines by, produced by the immune system, like IL-1 beta, IL-6, and uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and so on. C-reactive protein is really used as a proxy of those inflammatory cytokines activity in the body, which is fantastic. On the other hand, albumin is produced by the liver when the liver is in a rigorous state of health and when people have good nutrition. It's been shown that albumin decreases along the time course when the inflammatory bowel disease worsens. So the division of C-reactive protein by albumin makes the C-reactive protein more predictive, particularly of inflammatory bowel disease activity. Fascinating. I didn't know about this myself. Honestly, guys, I have not been using C-reactive protein divided by albumin. Although I saw it before, I've just been using C-reactive protein for myself. They also discussed, by the way, how predictive, I, I didn't, this is in my notes, but how predictive C-reactive protein over albumin is for ulcerative colitis or for Crohn's disease. Now, just for you guys to know, in Crohn's disease, the vast majority of people have elevated C-reactive proteins. In colitis, that's not the case. Finally, I'd like to let you guys know the metric they used here, the cutoff value is 0.06 in the C-reactive protein divided by albumin uh, ratio. When CAR was over 0.06, Disease activity for uh, Crohn's disease was 1.45 more likely and for ulcerative colitis was 1.76 or uh, 1.77 more likely. Finally, the final paper by Hota et al. This paper I just wanted to mention briefly, <clears throat> it again reviews C-reactive protein as a predictor of, in this case, non-small lung cell carcinoma, which is a kind of lung disease that has poor outcomes. What they found is that initial C-reactive protein levels when the patient was first diagnosed are predictive of the patient's ability to recover from new treatments such as epidermal growth factor tyrosine kinase inhibitors. In this study, 213 patients with non-small cell lung carcinoma showed that C-reactive protein did not differ significantly between epidermal growth factor mutant patients, there's a couple of kinds of this cancer, and wild type NSCLC patients but it was highly predictive of patient survival. In fact, using a CRP uh, cutoff of eight for the EGFR mutated people and 17 for the non-mutants, they found that patients with CRPs north of that cutoff were 2.5x more likely to have a negative prognosis among the mutants and 3.6x more likely among the non-mutants. So C-reactive protein is highly predictive. In fact, in this paper, they also quoted a study that shows that, a meta-analysis that shows that C-reactive protein levels are predictive of fatalities among all solid state uh, tumor cancers. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for bearing with me. I'll see you next time with another episode of BioNews.